Minicamp is over, so I'm going to go over the biggest winners and losers for the Steelers minicamp as we head into the rest of the offseason. I'm your host, Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things on the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find this show on your favorite podcasting app and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. We thank you for making the Locked On Steelers podcast your first listen every day because we're your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by bird dogs go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL and they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order more on bird dogs later but y'all mini camp is over it's the last time we got to see any of the Steelers until they report to training camp in St. Vincent in late July and to be honest I think that this was a, a you know for what mini camp can be positive for I think it was positive because we heard a lot of good feedback from a lot of the young players that the Steelers brought in this year. And part of this also is because this has the potential to be a really special rookie class. You know, talking about Broderick Jones, you really couldn't see him or really Keanu Benton doing too much because their positions where physicality is required. And this is running around in shorts and helmets and, you know, no hitting is really allowed, but, um, guys who are in the skill positions where where they are still running and playing and covering and showing what they know and how to switch in different moment, moments like that, those guys did have a chance to show out. And some of them really impressed. And, and uh, leading the way for that were the Steelers' two cornerbacks that they drafted this year, of course, Joey Porter Jr. and Corey Trice Jr., both six foot three guys that have looked really strong. Um, we've, t- we've played clips of them before on the show of how they've been talking about it, but Mike Tomlin took the, took the podium one last time for mini camp on, on third after Thursday's practice. And I wanted to make sure I asked him what have they, how have they taken on the challenges that they give? Cause Mike Tomlin is not going to come out and say, Oh, these guys are great. Oh, these guys are that you can't, you don't ask Mike Tomlin those type of questions. You ask him to see if he'll get you anything on just, what he sees about how, how they're taking on the process, not necessarily a grade or anything, but just see how he evaluates how they take on what they're pu- how they're pushing them, what they want to see and what their challenges are. And I thought it was very interesting what he had to say about those two cornerbacks. Here was Mike Tomlin when, when I asked him that question after a minicamp practice on Thursday. You know, they're sharp guys, the type of institutions they went to, the, the caliber of ball they played. It wasn't much that we introduced to them schematically that they hadn't already been exposed to. Um, both sharp guys. Um, you know, I, I think the, the what to do is less of an issue for them, and, and they're making the transitional things that most corners do, the nuances of the game in terms of contact beyond five yards and stuff like that. The difference between college ball and the professional ball, I think, is kind of where a lot of the energy has been. So I think you hear a little bit of Mike Tom there talking about the differences that they're going through there, which are going to be natural. Both of those guys were physical cornerbacks who, you know, have to adjust to the rules of the NFL where there's a, you know, there's a lot more space and a lot more protections to wide receivers. And those are things that they're going to have to be very wary of both Corey Trice and Joey Porter Jr. Guys, they get handsy and they both have admitted like, hey, they have to work on that because they can't afford to draw penalties. Penalties extend drives and kill big momentum opportunities. You got to take that away. And that's something that the Steelers, I think, are going to be pressing those guys to yeah, you know, to, to work up to work on, and Joey Porter Jr. When we when we when I asked him about how he felt about his progress, and I brought up I also you know, I asked him about his progress, what he what he felt about him and Corey Trice, and then eventually I told him what Mike Tomlin said, and he had an interesting response to yet yeah, to that challenge that Mike Tomlin mentioned there. Here was Joey Porter Jr. when we caught up with him in the locker room after the last mini camp practice on Thursday. Oh uh, man, it was great. Uh, I learned a lot. You know, there's still things to learn, but I feel like I ended it off on a great note. Me and Trice uh, really just been trying to do our thing and uh, really just pick up on old guys what they're saying. I feel like we did a good job of that. It seemed like they threw you guys in a lot of different situations and a lot of different matchups. What was like the toughest thing that you that you guys had to kind of do together? Um, 
I wouldn't say there was no tough things really, but we're really just working on our technique right now. Well, especially me, uh, just getting my footwork right and uh, really just tracking the ball, and really that's that's really just it. We just, we just talked to Mike outside. He said that you two guys, if there wasn't too much that they threw at you guys, that was a surprise. It's just more so like the physical, when to be physical, when not to be physical. How do you think you feel like you learned from just experiences here? Uh, I feel like I learned a lot. I feel like I learned a lot, but um, really, it was really hard at the beginning of the camp. You know, just really from college to NFL, you really don't. Uh, they really don't have the same rules. So uh, getting out, understanding, going through OTAs, and then just finishing mini camp, I feel like I ended off on a good note with that. Do you have ending off on a good note is important for Joey Porter Jr. But also understanding where you have to go is also the important point there. I, I think it was good to hear him, you know, speak confidently about his progress, but also not speaking away. It's like, yeah, I'm doing fine. Pff, what do you to me? You know, uh, that's one thing that I really like about Joey Porter Jr. is that when we ask him questions. He doesn't turn people take people away. He's very polite. He, he thinks about his answers. He's giving fully thought out answers about different things. And I think he does a good job about handling that. And heck, he did so at the combine. We talked about that when we were at the combine this past uh, February, uh, when he when he when he was speaking uh, to to media, and we were asking him questions. And it was like, man, this guy's polished quite quite a bit a year. And I think you know, in his game, he's going to need to polish out the parts of his game that are going to potentially draw uh, penalties, as is Corey Trice. But from what you're hearing, at least from him, and we, you know, we talked to Corey Trice earlier in the OTAs uh, earlier this month. Um, I think you hear guys that they get that they have things to work on, but they're not afraid to work on them, and they're pretty confident about how they're going to do it. And you know, I can say from talking to other Steelers that were in the locker room, those guys both performed well in those practices, and that's why I have them as 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 players who shine during minicamp because. Uh, both were able to use their size. Both were able to run with different guys, take on communication efforts. And I think that's really big for the Steelers uh, moving forward is to get more guys who can do things uh, like that, especially if they get two cornerbacks. I mean, they could fix the cornerback room in one sweep. We've talked about that a lot there. Um, and, and again, it's very early in both their careers. They're both rookies. They haven't played a single down yet. They haven't put on their, they haven't put on shoulder pads once yet. And, I think that uh, you know it's natural to ask to ask questions about how the corners are doing. I think it's natural how um, you know Mike Thomas talking about the progression from college to pros. Uh, but what I think can be more than natural, or what can what can be uh, you know extraordinary, is if both of these guys learning under Patrick Peterson. You heard Joey Porter Jr. talk about some of the vets that that are helping them out, them out. But if both these guys do take those lessons to heart, if they if they look, if they learn how to be reliable earlier than later, uh, and reliable meaning they they stick to their assignments, they do what they're supposed to do, they 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 become like erasers where you can't just throw the ball their way and it's going to be, you know, a decent chance of making a play on that person. And I think if they can get two guys like that, and it sounds like they're they're, they're at least passing the first stage of their rookie season with minicamp and OTAs, I think it's going to be a big boost to what the Steelers' defense is trying to do, not just this year, but for many years down the line. Uh, Also want to talk about Darnell Washington because he was another guy that's that's been turning a lot of heads for what he's been able to do. I'll talk more about that on the second segment of the the Locked on Steelers podcast. Don't go anywhere because we will be right back. But first, before we do that, I want to talk to you guys about our great sponsors at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs is, of course, a clothing line that's here to make you look good. They use stretch khaki shorts designed to fit slimmer on you through the thigh and the leg giving you a truly sculpted look bird dogs short bird dog shorts do the same exact thing as lululemon but they fit way better and they fit better than regular shorts that can be made of stiff restricting cotton cotton while bird dogs fix that fix this issue by inventing a cloud knit fabric that looks just like the khaki but but stretches so that you can get a way slimmer fit without having to sick sacrifice movement. Bird dogs usually uh, use anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. So go to birddogs.com slash locked on NFL to enter promo code locked on NFL, all capital letters on one word, and you can get a Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NFL for a free Yeti style tumbler. Don't you don't want to miss uh, you don't you, uh, you trust me when you get bird dogs you won't want to take them off we promise you because the bird, bird dogs are some of the best shorts out there go get some bird dogs at birddogs.com slash locked on NFL.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. Want to do a quick uh, shout out before we, or a quick announcement here before we uh, move forward to the next segment. Just a reminder if you want to call into the show at any time and ask questions, you can always call in at 412 223 6644. Give us your name, where you're from, and keep your message under a minute. We'll try to get you on the show. We do get a lot of calls, and, and also just with news, sometimes we can't get the calls on the air, but. We promise you if you donate to the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation campaign that I have linked on this page right now, uh, you can find the description in the podcast uh, with a link there or use the QR code that's currently on your screen. If you donate at least $10, it'll guarantee that your call will be answered within a a week of of your donation uh, so that we try to get your question on the air as fast as we can. Um, But if you also just want to donate to help out the fight against cystic fibrosis, please go to that link. You will use that QR code. It'll be a big help to a lot of people who need help fighting such a serious condition. But as I said before, I want to talk to you guys about Darnell Washington because we can't say what we see in practice, but we can say that a lot of people are talking about the plays that he's making, and it's starting to turn some heads. Not starting to. He's been turning some heads. And he's still not consistent. He still has things to work on. But Darnell Washington's looking pretty doggone good too. If we're talking about winners, and got people that, you know, are showing really good signs of progress. And Darn Washington, when you're looking at him, and the things that we, you know, when you talk to guys, they're like, man, like that frame is such an asset. You know, people talking about, you know, other players are joking about how easy he, he can make Kenny Pickett's job to find him because he's so big and tall and gives you a chance to kind of win more jump balls or put, you know, put the ball in, uh, in, a, in a place where only he can go get it. And it's much easy to do that when he can just, kind of tower over his opponents. But there have been detractors on Darnell Washington. It's not, he's not the perfect third, late third round pick that the Steelers had there. Some people say that, well, this is a mistake. This is why people didn't want him because he can't run routes just yet. And he doesn't have that in his repertoire. And if you look at him, yeah, he's very limited in his route tree as far as what he can and can't do. But he knows that. And I think, and he's working on that. And we asked him about what he's. We asked him at the after the, the, the after the final mini camp practice, what he's been working on and what he sees in himself that he needs to keep keep pushing, uh, and what he kind of found himself, you know, do, you know, finding out about himself in mini camp. Here was Darnell Washington. We spoke to him on Thursday after oh, after mini camp wrapped up. Really, all of it. Uh, just a little bit of everything. Uh, I know, I may ran. A good route here or there during these couple of days, but it's still like just staying consistent with it. You know, I uh, feel like when it comes to that, uh, cleaning up in and out of breaks, uh, when it comes to the blocking, uh, I mean, we didn't have pads on, so I can't, you can't really tell, like, you know, uh, but I mean, that's something, you know, I'm going to try to showcase, you know, uh, when we get there and things like that. So the part where he says, he ran a good route here or there. He can run good routes. It's just not going to be consistent because that's not his strong point. But here's what I say to those who are like, oh, man, he's going to be limiting routes. I don't know if that's going to work. Darnell Washington is not coming to the Pittsburgh Steelers to become the top target. He's just not. He's going to be in this offense whenever he's on the field. If he's on the field, most likely they're in 12 personnel this year, right? And if they're in 12 personnel... That means you're most likely have Deontay Johnson as a wide receiver, George Pickens as a wide receiver, Pat Frymuth as a starting tight end, Najee Harris as your running back, and then you have a second tight end, Darnell Washington. And if he's in that position, all you got to do is line him up. You don't got to run some intricate route. You don't got to be Travis Kelsey. Just run down the middle of the defense. Hit a seam. And if you're there, I'll throw it to you. If not, cool, you tired somebody out. But Darnell Washington, I think for those who might be you know, having a hang up on any routes he may not be able to run too cleanly right now, something he's going to work on. And you hear him talking about it. He, like, those are things that he wants that he's targeting. He's like, OK, I'm starting to get a hang of what's expected of me. And again, it's still not football in pads. He even brought that up, you know, for his, you know, his, the, his most exciting part of uh of of playing sometimes is the hits he's able to deliver and he can't deliver hits during you know mini camp and OTAs and stuff because that's you're trying to protect your players and it's against the rules. 
But when the pads go on, I think it's going to be another asset in Darnell Washington's favor, which that plus um, how – uh, how that plus how I think that he's going to line up in this offense and that they're not going to ask him to run, you know, be the focal point of anything. He's going to be kind of the fifth option in the field most of the time. I think that's a perfect role for him to grow, find his feet. Um, and, uh, and, and again, not have pressure on him to be the man because it is even Pat Fryer is ahead of him. And, uh, you know, I think that there's there's a there's a lot of really good potential potential things there for Darnell Washington. Um, another guy who um, is a winner who uh, you know also is, is going to be catching the footballs. I think was Calvin Austin. Uh, his speed was on display, and a lot of people were talking about it a lot in the locker room. Just like man, yeah, it's it's good. Like some people who saw him last year, but then you know didn't see him play, they were just saying it's good. That he, it's good to be back with him. Uh, because they they get to see what he's going to be right, bring there, and he probably is going to get a look at the return game as a possibility. So, um, you know, there's there's plenty of guys out there who I think that are, and again, this is the, the situation the Steelers in. Because if you remember earlier this week, I talked about how you know the wide receiver three debate and the concern there, I think, is overstated because whoever's wide receiver three is the fifth option on the field. It's the same thing with Darnell Washington. Um, you know, you look you look at that; it's going to be. Um, uh, when you're when, when you're looking at Darnell, Darnell Washington, he's not going to be the attention getter. He's going to be the fifth option on the field. He's going to be the guy that kind of has to get matched up with the afterthought uh, of the, or the last guy on this on the the, the defense uh, that, that that's going to cover you know all the different skill positions, and that can create matchups. So I think that's something that that he's going to have. Calvin Austin, if he's on the field, he's going to be able to blow right right past a lot of people. Um, you know, I, I think that again, I think they've got some some good people who some good guys who ha- have done well in uh, in in mini camp. They're guys that have been fo- following you know what the plan is, and across the board, this is why I've been telling Pete, telling Steelers fans get excited. I think that there is there has been a culture reset of who's lead who are the leaders. Well, not the leaders that are actually the leaders right now. Cam Hayward, Mickey Fitzpatrick, T.J. Watt. That's still intact on the defensive side. But the Steelers needed to kind of refigure out who was going to be like the leading face of the offense and how that was going to work. And they're still they still could make some changes. But we talked about how Kenny Pickett could take the reins in this offense and kind of carry them forward with all the different targets here. I think that that's another good sign for the Steelers that, you know, as they're trying to reshape the culture, if Kenny Pickett does take the reins there, it points them into the direction of being a whole team again. And not that they haven't been a whole team, but I mean, well, actually, no, last year they weren't a whole team. And like, yes, they were together in the sense that they could come together and they were on the same roster and everything. But I'm talking about a complete depth chart with, with, with players across the board that know what they're doing, that aren't just add-ins right there because you're in a tough salary cap situation. And again, I think Kenny Pickett fits right in with that. And if Darnell Washington's turning heads and Calvin Austin's turning heads, you got you got a lot of good decisions or good good tough decisions to make later on this year when you're deciding who's going on the field and when with different formations, whether it's Allen Robinson, Calvin Austin, Darnell Washington, or anyone else that you want to throw in that conversation. All good things there. But I want to talk about not everything is pe- is, is all peachy here uh, for the Steelers in minicamp. I want to talk about some of the situations, other situations that I think were really good about minicamp for the Steelers and other situations that uh, might need some more attention. Uh, we'll talk about that here on the Locked on Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm your host, Chris Carter. We continue our wrapping up of mini camp here for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, a few things. Uh, one, my last part, Kenny Pickett's accuracy. It's there. Everyone's talking about it. Uh, I, I think he is going to be much sharper this year. and That's going to help everything out. We just I talked a little bit about Kenny Pickett there. I do think that's another big step in what the second year has to be for him and for the Steelers as a whole. But let's get to some of the ones that I 
don't think worked out for them this in, in, in mini camp. And one of them isn't necessarily something that I saw on the field as much as I just saw the you know the 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 buttoned up thing you'll kind of become unbuttoned in and that's the Kevin Dotson situation because Kevin Dotson was a guy who you know didn't really you know he it, it, when he, when he talked to the media he didn't say you know any anything outlandish but he went on a podcast uh, last week and said that Broderick Jones probably won't start in his first year and he's offering things like that um, and you know, and he's been replaced. I think that just narrative wise, I think Kevin Dotson just, you know, he's in a position where he does like where he, you know, a lineman, uh, isn't going to be able to kind of, I guess, pr- prove his point in that, that he belongs with the team when you're in mini camp and you can't put on pads and you got to be physical. Uh, that's something that he's gonna have to prove his point in training camp. But if the Steelers already have Isaac Ciomala there and James Daniels, the other guard. It's a tough spot for him to be in. So I put him there in the loser column or it's not a loser. It's, it's, it's more like a, more like a, you know what? His stock definitely dropped, you know, over this period. And naturally so, because I don't like to call anyone necessarily losers, you know, unless they lose a game. And then that's just what you're describing them there. I don't think that, that if, yeah, that, you know, there was too many people that you could consider a loser of mini camp. I do think that there are, um, Certainly winners. I think that there's certainly people who have benefited from mini from mini camp. Um, but if I was to pick one person in in particular who probably felt the most impact from it in a, in, in a not a great way was Kevin Dotson, just because of uh, of everything going on with the moves that they've made and how they wanted to operate uh, moving forward. There, um, other guys that I think were in, that that probably that also kind of didn't have a great mini camp. Um, bottom of the depth chart wide receivers in uh, Miles Boykin and Gunnar Olszewski. Now Boykin, I think, is safe because he's a gunner. Uh, it's funny we're you know we're talking about Gunnar Olszewski, he, but Boykin's been a gunner. I think he, he's a guy who can help you in a lot of different ways on special teams. Gunnar Olszewski's kind of kind of a return man, but he's not a fast one. And now they've gotten multiple fast options. So. I think that I look at that the bottom of that Jeff chart of the wide receiver position, and I think that man, this could be a huge change. This could be a huge change if you see if you see it work that work out that way, and you can see those guys go. And I know a lot of people are excited about Hakeem Butler. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that there. I think that the huge change that I'm talking about here could be the depth that's offered there because Calvin Austin isn't the only fast guy on this roster anymore that everyone hasn't kind of seen yet. There's this Jordan Bird guy, number 16, who's pretty fast as well. And he's not going to jump over Calvin Austin. Calvin Austin is the fourth round pick from last year. He's going to get that deferential treatment there. But wouldn't surprise me if – um it wouldn't surprise me if if we see some of these guys jump ahead of the guys at the bottom of the wide receiver depth chart because the Steelers try to make some extra moves. I'm not sure if Des Fitzpatrick's going to do it. Akeem Butler, he has his ups and his downs, and this is what I've said about him for years: is that man when he's on, it's spectacular. He has the right size, he has the right athleticism, he he can get it done. When he's not on, he makes a lot of mistakes. And yeah, I'm not saying that's what he did in, in minicamp because I can't say that, but. I can say that uh, I can say that you know when when you know you talk to him and he's talked about what he needs to improve. I think that he still needs to keep working on that. He'll be in training camp and we'll get to see more of him there. And I think that's a good thing. You get to see how he continues to improve. But I think honestly, you look at the speed, you look at him, you look at different things. There's um, there, there's 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 some op- there's some options there. Uh, that could that could switch up who the guys at the bottom of the other wide receiver depth chart are, and then also like how do they use the other wide receivers in their in their depth chart? But anyways, I'll get off the wide receivers here um, because I want to just kind of look around look around this roster and mini camp. And I think one of the biggest parts that was positive, or as far as rising stock, is just overall this locker room 
these guys across the board, I think, all kind of get what Mike Tomlin's trying to do. And uh, Mike Tomlin, you know, set a tone talking about reasonable expectations and reasonable, you know, goals to attain during their time off. You know, one thing that he emphasized to Mike Tomlin, that is, uh, when when uh, mini camp was over was is like, you know, big one of part of the challenge is making sure you stay in shape or get in better shape when you come back and you're ready for for uh, for for. Uh, excuse me, St. Vincent College training camp because some guys don't do that as much and that slows things down and it brings them back and it kind of delays the process of getting ready for the season and the Steelers are trying to make sure that nobody does that this time around. But um, I, I think that Mike Thomas has set a good tone and I think that a lot of these guys are buying in across the board. The offensive line, new and old pieces, the defensive line, uh, you know, the stars of the team, the quarterbacks of the team. I, I think they're, they're, they're putting themselves in a position and, they, and if they continue to operate in the way that they are, I, I think one of the biggest things that we're going to see, not just out of minicamp, but out of this overall season is how this group can come together in tough moments. Because if if you are if you have true chemistry, if you are able to rely upon each other, if there's good a good locker room environment, you can come you can come together in normal moments. But if you if you're able to do that in a normal moment, or if you're able to kind of just be there for each other and trust each other, and there's true harmony in the locker room, oftentimes that's what helps you in big games is that you have those connections. And in fact, we've talked about this before when Mike Tomlin talked about one thing that inspected, that made him so excited about Kenny Pickett as a player was knowing how, what he did for Pitt's locker room in reuniting the offense and the defense kind of not as being as odds as with each other, but him and DeMar Hamlin, Kenny Pickett and DeMar Hamlin back in their Pitt days, kind of built a better culture there. And that's what the Steelers are trying to do right now. Because Cam Hayward's only going to be here a few more years. Patrick Peterson's only going to be here this year and maybe next year. And TJ Watt and, and, and Mika Fitzpatrick are there, but they need help. In, this, in the 2000s Steelers, uh, it wasn't just Paul Amalu and it wasn't just you know a couple guys holding it down. There was a standard that was kept. And I think that if the Steelers want to get that standard back, if they want to be able to uh, to boast some success with the way that they operate, they've they've got to they've got to they've got to be able to rally together. And I think that's going to again come from unity in the locker room, come from you know being on the same page. You know, Kenny Pickett being this film guru, but also working with his teammates a lot more, and them being in sync because they're working so much more together. And also the defense kind of helping out with that and vice versa. You know, the fact that Minka Fitzpatrick and Kenny Pickett watch, watch film together, I think that that's a very good thing. And there's there's things that both can share about each other's, you know, style of play, thoughts, insights that they can, you know, that they, this can all ultimately be something that comes together and gets the uh, the Steelers locker room on the right page. But we still have to see how this is going to play out. Training camp is is what a month and a week away or something like that, and uh, there's going to be lots of fights in training camp. It happens every year. Don't be surprised when it when it does when it does happen. It's just the na the nature of big people com big big people competing against each other, and someone's got to lose some fights so, or some plays. And it's some guys. If you have that pride in you, you have that dog in you, you don't like to lose, and you bite back, and it becomes a thing. That's when we'll start to see who's who when we see some of those those scraps when August comes. But as for as of right now, and those scraps don't destroy the locker room unless someone does something out, way out of the ordinary. But by and large, I think that the Steelers are very excited to see just how tough they are because one thing we got from when we talked to Carl Dunbar, we talked to Eddie Faulkner, we talked to Pat Meyer, all the, the position coaches of guys that are going to be involved in either stuffing the run or running the ball they're all excited for when they get the pads on so that they can go prove who that they are going to be one of the tougher teams in all of in all of the NFL. And that that's going to be a factor that wins them games. But we'll see.
This has been the Friday episode of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Thanks so much here for joining us on the Locked On Steelers podcast. We appreciate y'all through mini camp. We'll be back. We'll be gone throughout the weekend, but we'll be back next week getting getting our thoughts, getting your calls, and uh, talking more about your Pittsburgh Steelers here in the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. Thanks so much for checking us out. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques. Read my work at the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, and you can check me out on your favorite podcasting apps and on YouTube. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to this YouTube channel to get all of your daily Monday through Friday episodes as well as our bonus content. I'll be back Monday with another episode on your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.